Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again, and I'm jumping on a thread this time around. Um, so, I saw this thread pop up the other day. This is from Dylan over at the Record Spinner, and it's the Kiss Vinyl Tag. And I thought, hot dog, because, I mean, that's my first love, Kiss. That was the first band that I ever got into as a 11-year-old, and et cetera. First concert I went to, all that stuff. Um, and then I come to realize, as I looked at the questions, <laughs> well, first off, Obviously, it's going to be affected by the fact that I only re got it, restarted buying vinyl in 2017. But it turns out that for a vinyl tag, which you're showing vinyl, and as a KISS fan, there's a big difference between being a lifelong KISS fan and being a KISS fanatic when it comes to especially vinyl records and things. And apparently, I'm not a KISS fanatic in the sense of that. As we'll see, some of these questions I can't answer because I have not reached that status of having all of these, which would be something a fanatic would have. And I, I do call myself a fanatic, but not in the sense of a hardcore fanatic collector. And I think there's a difference there. So I'm going to try, you know, whatever. It's There's not, no loss here. I'm sharing some KISS stuff. But let's get into this, and you'll see where my weaknesses are and uh, where I need help. So uh, it's a list of questions here, so we're going to go by this list because there are in, or detail here. Um, the first one is called, The First Step of the Cure is a Kiss. Show the first Kiss record you ever received or bought. I've shown this hundreds of times because we've told this story. Well, not hundreds. Quite a few times. Kiss Love Gun. I purchased this. This is one of the first albums I personally somehow got money or borrowed money from parents that I personally bought, not something that was given to me, not 45 singles that I had as a kid. This was the first record I bought. My, I remember we went to the one of the stores, probably Montgomery Wards or Sears or someplace, and I remember buying this and coming home and putting it on, and my brother was teaching me, my older brother was teaching me who the members were, uh, and he was drawing the album cover. But anyway, this is where it started for me. I picked this up shortly followed by you know, some of the previous albums. But this is where it started. This is where I really got into them. And I bought this roughly around the time it came out. I know it was either, it was right around this time. Kiss Alive 2 might have already been out. But I think, I remember seeing that on the front store shelves when it came out. So this, I might have bought this right before that time. But so to me, this is the era. This is the costumes. This is the look. Everything that I think of in my mind that's ingrained in my mind for Kiss is this era. Because this is where it really started for me. Great stuff. So, second question. Germany was really sweet. Show a German pressing with the censored logo. I have Kiss Revenge. And this was actually not intentionally bought. I bought it from Amazon and it came this way. They were selling the... And it was on sale. And this is one of the 2014 repressings. And so, yeah. Uh, I don't know how many other... I don't think I have any others with the German logo like this. But anyway, great stuff there. Number three, you wanted the best, you got the best. Show a compilation or best of. Now, honestly, I'm not a fan of best of unless there's something on it that makes it worth buying, something different, something added. Um, I have had my hands on that same Kiss <laughs> compilation for Walmart over and over again, but I'm just like, why? Why am I shelling out the money for songs I already have? I'd rather have all the albums. So I'm not a big collector of compilations, like I say, unless there's something that makes them worth buying the only one i have would be the classic double platinum and even that you know i mean it's it is a compilation but some of the songs have been tweaked and updated but this will probably be the closest thing i call it a compilation because it's kind of, it is the best of i mean it's got all the a lot of the best songs up to this point um beyond this like i say i'm not sure how many others i would even be interested in buying just because if you have all the albums i'm just never much of a best of person i usually buy best of albums by bands that i'm not intent i'm not intending to buy their entire collection i'm just like that's enough for me you know i'll get the best of that band so anyway kind of a partial failure but partially good number four you gotta get all you can take show a kiss bootleg i do have a couple of those these are the unofficial pressings uh gods of thunder now since we are sticking with vinyl that's a problem i've got a lot of kiss bootlegs uh when it comes to digital you know concert bootlegs i've got CD editions, bootlegs uh, of all different concert stuff. But we are sticking with vinyl. This is a, a an import that came out, uh, what was the name? It's from a radio broadcast. It's that English company that I bought stuff from them. Anyway, I'm not going to pull it out. It's on blue. But it's one of those radio broadcasts burned to vinyl. Same thing with this one. 
the Roots on Fire, you know, one of them radio type broadcast burn to vinyl. There's a couple different editions out there of this uh, with different covers and stuff, but uh, this is one I've got. And then we've got the unofficial release of Creatures of the Night with Vinnie Vincent on the cover. This is a Brazilian copy. They came out last year or so. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, an unofficial bootleggy type thing. Lay that to the side because that's going to come back up in something else too. Um, she's got the magic touch. Show a Kiss Online exclusive pressing. Here's one that I fail on because honestly, the shirt is a Kiss Online exclusive. It's not vinyl. Um, honestly, I don't buy much from Kiss Online. A, they're just too expensive. And B, I'm just not the type that's going to jump on all the little things. I mean, I can get the live. They got the different color variants of the off the soundboard collections, but I'm fine with black and I'll buy it either locally or from Amazon or some. Um, some of the things that I have wanted from the Kiss Online that were exclusive are those things that like disappear immediately. And they're you know, it's like somebody, they, they get all bought up. I've missed out on some things that I probably would have bought, but for the most part, their prices are out of what I desire to pay. And I'm, I guess I'm not a fanatic enough to jump on board some of the more obscure things that they do press that disappear really fast. I probably would struggle to do it, but I probably would try. So anyway, I got nothing directly from Kiss Online as far as any vinyl pressings. You like my 7-inch leather heel? Show a 7-inch. Again, I'm not a big collector of 7-inches. I have nothing by Kiss. Um, I looked through to see if I had anything even close, but I do not. So my collection of 7 inches is about that many, probably about 50. And those were either things that are just, again, special pressings of songs that weren't on an album or things that I have been given or picked up along the way, um, but I don't usually go out of my way to search for them. And again, maybe with time, if I ran to a record store and I was flipping, I do occasionally flip through seven inches. If I went in a record store and saw one and it was one of those, you know, a cover, had the cover art and everything and it was a kiss, I probably would buy it. I just don't dig around in seven inches that much. So another failure there for number six. Number seven, you're a jewel in the rough. You want to show me your stuff. Show your most valuable piece of kiss vinyl. Again, most of the stuff, I got back into vinyl in 2017. Most of the stuff that I have picked up by then have been the 2014 represses. Some of those have been pricey nowadays to find. Some of them they've been repressing um, so that they have dropped back in price. I would say the most expensive thing I got is this. This just came out last year, but still, you know, if you, if you go to buy this now, you're going to pay $60 plus. I know that's not a, that's not a big valuable situation. Um... But some of the things like the uh, the Kiss Unplugged double record set, I think I got back there. That one is kind of pricey. But again, it's a recent reissue. It's not like it's a, a, a real classic. I have a copy of the originals back there, but it's all beat the heck up. So it's not worth much of anything. So I don't really have anything because I've just got back into buying vinyl recently. I don't have anything yet that I would call super collective uh, as far as valuable. Number eight, got to get away, don't want to stay. Show a solo album by a KISS member that isn't from 1978. I pulled three just because I'm failing at so many other questions. And that's three of the KISS Peter Chris albums, uh, Out of Control. These were recently reissued by the Rockologist. So these are the recent reissues from, what, like a year ago or so. Um, the, that one, and Let Me Rock You. And then this one came out a few years before that, the Cat album. Um, and this one, this one's gotten up there in price it's kind of hard to find nowadays they have different color variants i got the purple so um but this is not a kiss vinyl so it's not really you know but it's pretty pricey nowadays so there you go three of the and of course i've got all the ace for ellie for ellie's comet stuff but let's go a little different we're going with peter chris and uh, again the recent reissues of his solo stuff there uh so let's see just Number nine, just call me a three-time loser. Show the most copy variants you have of a Kiss album. I'm not a big collector of variants. I do have two copies of Crazy Nights. I've got the regular one and the picture disc. I bought this first years ago strictly because I was hanging it up on my wall as a picture disc. This is before I even got back into buying vinyl records. I purchased this on eBay for pennies on the dollar because vinyl wasn't a big deal when I bought this like 10 or more years ago. And then I, of course, picked up the 2014 reissue of this. So I have two of these. Of course, the Creatures of the Night Brazil copy is the second copy because I have the recent reissue of Creatures of the Night uh, back there, I believe. That would be two of those. They're a little a slight variant there. The uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I have anything else that's uh, 
really multiple copies. So yeah, not to the point where I collect variants. Now I am on the lookout when I go to a record store and I see Kiss Alive 2, I do kind of flip. I am looking for that grail of finding one that's got the song titles wrong on the back of it. Christian over there had it uh, when he did his video and I, I'm on the lookout for obvious things like that, but I'm not one of those ones that buys different pressings, different labels, you know, but I do flip through and see if I find anything that maybe is, you know, out of the ordinary, but as of this time, I do not have anything like that. So I am a three-time loser. Um, Drew, uh, number 10, drew up my blood and signed it, showing autographed piece of Kiss vinyl. I don't have any. There, I failed that one. I have seen them multiple times in the, in the 80s. I saw them first in 79 uh, at the Dynasty Tour. Saw them a couple times in the 80s. Saw them quite a few times in the past 20 years. Never have met them. Never have had the chance to go to a signing. Never met them. Never had anything to sign. If it ever happens at this day and age, I would do it. But at this point, I have none. Call me a loser on that one again. That's it for this one, though. If you're interested, jump on this. This is fun. It's Again, I consider them one of my favorite bands. I've considered them myself a longtime fan. Apparently not a fanatic in the sense of my vinyl collection. I'll be back. Rock on and rock hard.